Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this uh, lesson. So we're going to talk about the definition of a limit. So we're going to look at limits and continuity in this objective. So we say that if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l as it approaches x from c from either side, then the limit is equal to l. So we, write, we read it as the limit of f of x as x approaches l is c meaning that the left side limit is equal to the right side limit, which means that it's overall equal to that number. Left side and right side limits have to be equal to each other in order for this limit to exist. And there's some rules. There's some theorems on limits. When you have sine of x over x or cosine of x uh, minus one over x, some of the common techniques for evaluating limits are substitution directly, factoring and simplifying, multiplying by the conjugate, or using a graphic table. So when I look at example one, plugging in five doesn't give me zero in the denominator, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Three times five plus one, square root of 16, which is four. Again, I can plug in pi because it doesn't give me zero in the denominator. So 3 pi minus the sine of pi. The sine of pi is zero, so overall, this is zero. Example three, I can't just plug in two because two gives me zero in the denominator, but I can go ahead and factor my numerator. So this is the limit as t approaches two of t minus 2, t minus 1, over t minus 2. And your t minus 2's cancel out. So now I can plug in 2, so 2 minus 1, which is 1. Again, factoring. Limit as x approaches b, x to the fifth minus x to the b, sorry, x to the fifth minus b to the fifth, x to the fifth minus b to the fifth, and x to the fifth plus b to the fifth. And my x to the fifth minus b to the fifth cancel out. So I'm left with the limit. x approaches b, one over x to the fifth plus b to the fifth. And because now there's no uh, issue with plugging in b in for my x, so I get one over b to the fifth plus b to the fifth which is 1 over 2b to the fifth. Example 5, I'm going to use my multiply by the conjugate trick. So multiply by the conjugate means I take what's in my numerator or in my denominator, but I switch the signs and multiply the top and bottom by it. So I'm switching the sign in between which you could do the box to multiply it out, uh, or you might you could use FOIL. So the limit, t approaches zero, t plus two minus two over t times root t plus two plus root two. So that gives me t, so the t cancels out, and I'm left with the limit, t approaches zero, 1 over root t plus 2 plus root 2. So now I could just plug in 0. So I get 1 over 2 root 2. Okay. Next is example 6. Example 6, there's really nothing I could do, but this is a uh, vertical asymptote. So when I take the limit, x approaches 3 from the negative side, and I look at the graph of this, I'm actually going to get negative infinity. And we'll look at the graph in just a second. And then we'll get positive infinity coming from the right. So now let's take a look at Desmos. 1 divided by... X minus 3. 
And what you notice is approaching it from the left, you're going towards negative infinity, and then approaching it from the right, you're going towards positive infinity. So overall, we say that this limit does not exist. If we approach, if we have x approaching positive infinity or negative infinity, we call this a definition of a horizontal asymptote. So what we do is we take the ratio Take your highest exponent of x in the denominator and divide everybody by it. And then what you get is 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. Do the exact same thing here. Limit x approaches negative infinity. 3x over x cubed minus 10 over x cubed, 4x cubed over x cubed plus 5 over x cubed. And what you actually get is you get a situation where you have 3 over x squared in the numerator. So overall, that limit is going to be 0. Take this one, the limit as x approaches infinity. 1 over x minus x squared over x divided by 10 x over x plus 7 over x. And what you're actually going to be left with in the numerator is you're going to be left with your 1 over x minus x. And as x approaches positive infinity, this is going to approach positive infinity. To determine the uh, horizontal and vertical asymptotes, so from a previous class, the vertical asymptotes when you set the denominator equal to zero. So you get x is equal to two is your vertical asymptote. And then limit x approaches infinity, three x plus five over x minus two. Limit as x approaches infinity, three x over x, 5 over x over x over x minus 2 over x. So you get 3 over 1, which is 3. So your horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 3. Okay, definition of continuity we've talked about before left side and right side limit have to be equal to each other and it has to be equal to f of the point. So here's a rule discontinuity. Bug walks along the graph, falls through the hole, rule discontinuity. Jump discontinuity, two bugs will never meet. Normally with uh, piecewise functions is where you get jump discontinuities. Vertical tangents are very similar to vertical asymptotes, but they do have something different, and that is the derivative is equal to zero gives you vertical tangents. Example 11, find the points of discontinuity of the function. So you'll factor this. So x is equal to negative 1 and 2 are vertical asymptotes. Which are also your discontinuities. Determine the intervals on which the graph is continuous. Which means that this has to be equal to this. So that means that the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 3x minus 10 over x minus 2 has to be equal to 10. So we can factor this limit, x approaches 2, x minus 2, x plus 5 over x minus 2 is equal to 10. 
So this is continuous everywhere, and then this is going to be equal to each other, and we don't know that yet. So we can cross those out, and then we get 2 plus 5 is not equal to 10. It's equal to 7. So that means that it's continuous everywhere except for when x is equal to 2. So f of x is continuous on negative infinity to 2, union 2, 2, infinity. For what value of k is the function continuous at x equals 6? So that means the limit x approaches 6 from the negative side of x squared minus 2x has to be equal to the limit as x approaches 6 on the positive side of 2x plus k, which means that 6 squared minus 2 times 6 has to be equal to 2 times 6 plus k. So 36 minus 12 has to be equal to 12 plus k. So 24 is equal to 12 plus k, so k is 12. <coughs> and then the last example. Here's my function here. And what value could b be where f of x equals negative 2 has no solution. So let's just graph this for a second. That's the easiest thing. This requires no calculus whatsoever. So 0, negative 4 is here. Here's 5 and negative 4. So if here's x equals 3, so if I was 3, 3, I would have two solutions. So that one is out. If I was at 3, 1, I would also have two solutions it's because it crosses the x-axis twice. So that would be out. At 0, I would be at one solution. Or no, I'm sorry, we'd still be at two solutions. Because I want x equals negative 2. So I'm looking at how many times it crosses the line x equals negative 2. If I had negative 2, it would be at once. So that's one spot. So it has to be at negative 5. For the function equal to negative 2 to have no solution. Okay. Which means how many times does it cross the line x equals negative 2? Has to cross the line x equals negative 2? No times. And that is it for this lesson.